innovation in new technology, virtual reality, PlayStation VR 2, PlayStation VR 2 sense controllers, greater sense of presence, people with eye tracking, feedback, 4K HDR, and 110 degree field of view. So that is the PlayStation VR 2 which has just been announced. Now I am a bit of a VR enthusiast or at least I've become so since I started making this channel, I mean it's kind of an overlap there. I used to play the PSVR 1, I didn't actually own it but I had, my best friend had it and we played it all the time. And I have an Oculus Quest 2 uh, which I've had for like a year now so I've been using it quite a lot. So even though we can't really like know what it's like, the PSVR 2 is not out, nobody's used it yet. It, they didn't even really show it there, they just showed the controllers. We can take a look at the specs and kind of uh, deduce or see how it's going to compare to the Quest 2 because we kind of know, you know, what kind of hardware works, what doesn't, and what all of the kind of things mean um, that can go in a VR headset. So let's take a look at those specs and see how they compare. So right from the start, looking at just the screen, there is a big difference. And this is going to be a cause of some contention, I think, between people who prefer one or the other. So basically the PSVR 2 is going to have two OLED screens with a per eye resolution of 2000 by 2040 pixels per eye. So overall that's 4K resolution and it's HDR so that's another little boost compared to the Quest 2 which has a single LED screen with a per eye resolution of 1832 by 1920. Already the PSVR is higher resolution and I think the better technology. When the Quest 2 came out, one of the downsides or perceived downgrades from the previous Quest was that they switched the screen from OLED to LED. Now basically the kind of advantage of it was that it had a higher resolution than the previous version but LED screens have this kind of backlight, a continuous backlight which makes anything dark look kind of greyish blue or there's really no deep um, black areas, there's always a kind of light shining. There's, I mean, there's an image here which I found kind of Googling the differences, which kind of puts it into perspective. This is a kind of photo of two phone screens. One on the left is LED, one on the right is OLED, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about there. So yeah, uh, I think OLED is the better option and especially if you can have OLED and a higher resolution, which the PSVR 2 seems to have. The, the max refresh rate of both is 120 hertz, which kind of puts them on even, even keels. The field of view of the PSVR, which is basically how far out you can see where the peripheral vision is, is 110 degrees compared to 100 degrees in the Quest 2. That's a bit of a difference. It's, you're gonna notice it a little bit. I've noticed differences when it's between 90 and 100. So that 10 degrees does make a bit of a difference, but it's not gonna be revolutionary. Now another new trick up the PSVR 2 sleeve according to the release specs is that it's going to have something called foveated rendering to it. I think this is going to be the first mainstream VR headset that has that capability. Basically what it is from what I can tell is it tracks your eye movement and then only renders what's directly in front of your eye and keeps all of the other details kind of blurred or at least a little bit lower quality. So I guess it's kind of mimicking what you would see in reality because obviously I'm looking at this camera right now, that's in focus, but things to the side of me are not in focus. So also it saves a lot of processing power because the headset doesn't have to render the whole scene at the maximum quality. I think that is also the point of it as well. So it leaves uh, more power for the headset to do other things. The Quest 2 does not have this. I don't know what it is, if we're gonna notice the difference, if it's gonna make any difference at all, um, but it is something that the PSVR is gonna have. Now, before we start, I should mention that these are two very different headsets, really. It's almost a little bit unfair to compare them. One of them is a standalone wireless headset that runs off a mobile processor um, and has to do everything for itself. The other is attached, well, it has to be attached to a PlayStation 5. It is tethered, it's not wireless, you're going to have all the power of a PlayStation 5 running this headset along with it's the PSVR 2 is going to be a lot more expensive once you consider you have to buy a console which is a deal breaker it seems for a lot of people. I saw online on the Facebook groups and stuff people are already declaring the PSVR dead on arrival because it has a tether. For a lot of things you don't need to be wireless to have fun on VR, you really don't. Um, a lot of the times I could have a wire sticking out and it wouldn't make a difference, it just depends how many there are. But how about the tracking technology? So the PSVR 1, this was one of its downsides because it re required the PlayStation camera, an external camera. Not only was it something else you needed to buy, more wires, more accessories, but it was just annoying. It didn't work as well as it should have. Thankfully, the new PlayStation VR 2 
doesn't need that anymore. It, it has um, inbuilt tracking in the headset, so it has the cameras and it will track your body, your head, your movement without having to have any extra camera. Quest has already done that. It's done that for the past year and a half or so, however long it's been out, and it does it really well. It also works without the controllers. You can track just your hands, which is really cool. That was a kind of update that came after it came out. For a headset that is as cheap as the Quest 2, I think that was pretty awesome. The big new thing for the PSVR 2, apart from the lack of a camera, is the eye tracking. So this is going to be, I think, the first, again, mainstream VR headset that has eye tracking. And in the kind of um, presentation and the blog post that PlayStation have released, they're kind of pushing it to be something that makes it more realistic. You'll be able to interact more intuitively as your character while allowing for improved social expression. Probably the most exciting thing that I saw or heard in this presentation or in the release of the PSVR 2 is this haptic feedback that they talked about. The headset's gonna kind of have a motor inside it which vibrates in certain ways. It, it will react to the environment in the VR world in whichever game or experience you're playing and then it will give you realistic feedback. So I guess let me read out what they said. It sounds really awesome, but sometimes things sound awesome and they're not. So here we go. For example, gamers can feel characters' elevated pulse during tense moments, the rush of objects passing close to a character's head, or the thrust of a vehicle as the character speeds forward. Additionally, PS5's Tempest Tempest? Tempest 3D audio tech makes sound in the player's surrounding come alive, adding to this new level of immersion. Whether this proves to be as good as they are saying remains to be seen, but that for me is kind of the next generation thing to be able to physically feel like you're interacting with things in a VR world or in a game, whatever you're doing is kind of the next step for me. Whatever the quest, next quest is going to be, I hope they take that on board and um, that's going to be a next generation thing. Obviously the Quest 2 doesn't have anything like that. I do however really like the controllers of the Quest 2. I find them super easy to use. Um, I find them very ergonomic um, and I've not broken them yet and I've smashed them against the table a few times. Now how about the kind of games and the power and the performance you're going to get from both of these headsets. Now I said right at the start of this that it is not really comparable, it's not really fair. One of them is run off a mobile processor and one of them has the PS5 which is like the most powerful gaming system ever made. So you're going to get way more advanced, bigger, higher textures, better textures, better graphics on the PlayStation 5, on the, sorry, on the PSVR. It's just inevitable. That's not to say that you can't have an awesome VR experience on the Quest 2. This can play some really quite big, awesome VR games. And remember, you can plug it in to a, a VR-ready laptop and the Quest 2 will then be able to play PC VR games, which are also more advanced, bigger, things like Skyrim, things like Half-Life Alex, things like um, uh, Star Wars Squadrons. I but just on its own, it's limited to what it can do. But what it can do is still pretty fun. PlayStation VR 2, though, I think is going to be one that um, has the best exclusives. They already released or they announced that they're going to um, have a Horizon game. Horizon Zero Dawn was my favorite game of the last, like, 10 years, probably. I love that game so much. So just the fact that they're making one of their flagship um, games into VR or even an exclusive like not it's not even a port it's a whole new game in VR in that world shows that they are putting some effort into it just from the trailer that the tiny 20 second trailer that they had it just seemed really amazing it would be such an awesome world to play in VR I think um, I do think that for gaming the PSVR is probably gonna be uh, I don't know if it'll be better but I think the games that are gonna be on it are gonna be really really more advanced um, whereas the Quest 2 has more of a broad range of games, but there's a lot of them, but a lot of them are quite basic. It's also worth mentioning that the wireless uh, capabilities of the Quest 2 means you can kind of do some other stuff. I mean, uh, Oculus, well, no, Oculus doesn't exist. Nope, Meta. Meta have been pushing the Quest as a fitness device. And a lot of people thought that's ridiculous. But to be honest, it actually isn't too bad. I have been using this sometimes when my gym is closed or it's too late to go or something. And I even made a video about it on this channel about how you can use this as a fitness device. And you can actually do it. You can um, have a decent workout. Get, you can at least get out of breath. There are some games, there are some dedicated fitness apps. You are probably gonna, not gonna be able to do that with a VR headset that's got a cable running down it because you're eventually gonna 
twist yourself around it, you're going to be punching it, you're going to be tripping over it. So Quest 2 is not just a gaming headset or a, you know, social headset. It could also be for fitness, working out, stuff like that. Essentially, the wireless aspect of it opens it up to more possibilities. So I guess that's it guys, that was just a little rundown of the specs of the PSVR 2 and then comparing them to the Quest 2. I like, I mean from just looking at it, it does look like the PSVR 2 in my opinion is the better headset which I don't think is that surprising. And I still claim that my little Questy here, my little Quest is um, probably one of the, the best value things I've ever bought. I mean, how much was it? Like $399 or £369 or something like that? It's really good value, um, I think. For the technology you get, for something that's you can do so much with, and I've had a lot of entertainment out of it, and it does have some quite advanced technology that didn't exist a couple years ago, or you wouldn't think would be this cheap and be completely wireless. I think for the mass market, the Quest 2 is still ahead, and we already know that there's more of these coming. There are updates to the Quest on the way, probably this year, probably early this year. So we'll see what the Quest Pro or 3, I'm not sure which one's coming up first. So we'll see if that competes with the PS VR 2. But for now, I'm really excited about it. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think the uh, the wired, the cable connection is a deal breaker or do you think that kind of haptic feedback, the eye tracking, the OLED HD screen kind of makes up for that? I think it does. I might branch out into making more VR stuff because it's been quite popular on this channel when I make VR stuff. I think there is kind of an overlap of the people who watch my other things. So yeah, if you want to see a full list of those specs again of both Quest and PSVR 2, check the link below to my website and it will be there and um, yeah, basically a written version of what I said. So yeah, that's it guys, I'll see you next time. Bye. Foveated rendering.